Hi friends, in my practice very often there is a need to drill or to sew something. When it comes to working with large details, a drill, angle grinder or screwdriver is used for this purpose, but for me the main tool is a drilling machine. It's quite good and has been serving fine for several years, but have a couple of shortcomings. Firstly, it has a collect cartridge. For high precision works, of course, it is good, but in my case, when it is constantly necessary to change the nozzles, this is inconvenient. But the most basic drawback of any network tool is attachment to the mains, and I'm a fan of portable devices. Looking at the prices of portable drills was slightly surprised. They are expensive but don't have high power and are suitable only for some kind of jewelry work. As a result, it was decided to create my own version of the portable drill and all bats were made for high power. So, as there is a lot of work to be done, I decided to divide this video into two parts. The second part will be available on the channel within 10 days. Links to all the components that are needed to assemble the same drill will be found in the description. Long time ago, I bought on AliExpress such mini drill chucks or cartridges. They are just for such purposes. They are of very high quality and precision, can clamp from 0.3 to 4 mm. The dimensions are now in front of you. It is completed with a brass adapter and a key. The adapter makes it possible to fit it onto the shaft of the motors 770, 550 and similar. Next, I must find the engine of the appropriate power. I took 550th motor. This is a powerful DC collector motor. It is often used in electric screwdrivers and it was taken from the old device. The engine is 18 volt, but I will feed it from 12 volts. It's convenient and the motor will not be overloaded. Despite the modest dimensions, this motor has a high torque, a power of about 100 watts or more, and rotation depending on the power can reach up to 20,000 turns. In other words, it can compete on all parameters with the mains motors from the standard drill machines. First of all, I installed an adapter at the chuck. The adapter itself is conical, so it can be reliably compressed, but I additionally poured it all over with superglue. Further, I screw the chuck onto the shaft of the engine and the power unit is ready. Tests prove that the chuck is good, the drill does not stagger, the bead is almost absent, it will work for high precision work. Now let's study the circuit of the device, it's now in front of you. It consists of a motor unit, a lithium-ion battery pack, a protection board and a PWM regulator for adjusting engine speed. The reverse mode of the engine is not realized here, it isn't needed. The engine always rotates clockwise. Let's start with batteries. These are high current lithium-ion batteries of 18650 standard. Each one is capable to give currents of 20 amperes for a long time and up to 95 amperes for half a second. The capacity is 2500 mAh. The batteries will be connected in series, so the total voltage will be 10.8 volts. Accumulators must be exactly high current type. The engine under load will load them a lot. The usual 18650 standard from laptops will not work long. Protection board will not allow the battery to discharge into the trash. Protect against overcharging and short circuits. The board in my case is just for 3 batteries, the maximum current is 20 amperes. If the load consumes more, the board will disconnect the battery, the perfect thing for this purpose. If you are looking for radio electronics as we are, we will advise you the GLCPCB website. This is a tremendous factory which designs boards of any shapes, forms and sizes. GLCPCB website is one of the leaders in this field with a multi-year experience. The boards will be made according to your design. There is a free shipping for the first order. The link will be found in the description under the video. PWM speed controller is the only one homemade node. Everything is very simple, a timer, a FET and some passive elements. The power part of this circuit is a powerful field effect transistor. The first sample was calculated for surface mount component. But the fat that was used in this version was very hot when the engine was heavy loaded. Despite the fact that it was rated for 60 amperes, the small housing became very hot. As a result, I drew a new board, this time for the components with pins. 
On the finished board, you can see a component that is absent in the circuit. It's a linear stabilizer 78L08, which feeds the 555 chip with a stable voltage of 8 volts. In general, the 555 timer works fine from 12 volts. But once again, I got not quite adequate microcircuits, which literally exploded at 12 volts of supply of voltage. As a field effect transistor, I used powerful N channel IRF3205. It needs to be installed on the radiator. Despite the work in the pulse mode, it will heat up. The diode protects the transistor from reverse induction from the motor winding. In my case, it is fast diode UF5408 and soldered directly to the motor power supply terminals. After checking the PWM regulator circuit, it needs to think about the housing and charge system, but that's another story that I will cover in the next video. Please don't forget to rate this video if you like it and share with friends in social sites. Links to components for assembly and the complete archive with a board and circuit can be found in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to my group in Facebook. The link is under the description. Now I have to say goodbye. With you was Kaisian TV. Until new meetings.